644 cc's, 43 and a half horses, one mighty cylinder. Now, 25 kilos lighter and fully overhauled with a smoother, more compact engine, a lighter, stiffer frame and aluminum swing arm. Massive advancements in styling and performance. The Suzuki DR650 is finally reborn. In 1996, aside from some Loctite here, a new gasket there, and maybe a less fraggable third gear, today's current model is essentially the same bike that hit showroom floors when The Rock was still in theaters. I suspect because Suzuki would have to reapply for certain certifications, the DR would never pass nowadays, but you know what else came out in 1996? We will change the system. When we walk into a buddy's garage and see either of these legendary machines, many of us don't ask, why do you still have that? Instead, our pupils dilate. We hear music and we reach for the controls. See, neither of these things are about being new. They're about the community that they built by growing old. So what do you say we cut the chit chat a hole and take a look at the culture behind these cult classic dual sports. A massive success out of the gate, Suzuki sold tens of thousands of the exact same bike all over the world for decades. We're here at Daytona Motorsports in Vancouver today where they still sell out every year. Its popularity was due to a much wider appeal than only a few direct competitors like the XR650 and the KLR650. It's the ultimate big board dual purpose machine. Compared to the 90s XRs, the DR had more low end power to keep beginners from stalling when crawling, but not enough acceleration off the line to freak them out. Plus, the seat height was low enough for most people to get a foot down. The DR also had a more efficient cooling system, still air-cooled, but with an oil cooler, expelling heat before pumping cooled oil back into the head, then rerouting it around the cylinder and returning to the engine. So XR650s were looking a little more like a tall man's monster dirt bike with a license plate, which I think is awesome. And KLR riders who wanted a little more maneuverability off-road were drawn to the DR. It was 60 pounds lighter when wet. So the tractor then got bumped a little further toward the tarmac on the dual sport spectrum. But again, that was in 96. Compared to today's competition, the seat is rock hard, it's undersprung, the intake and exhaust are too heavily restricted for competitive power, and the pipe is a total boat anchor. The thing is though, this was the equivalent of a $10,240 motorcycle when it came out. By today, Suzuki has gotten the price down to 7 k by leaving everything unchanged. What else has gotten cheaper since 1996? Nothing. Suzuki's negligence toward this bike seems almost criminal after nearly three decades with no updates, so it's almost natural that a community would form, led by a few vigilantes, to innovate for themselves. Procycle.us is held in high regard as the aftermarket cannon for the DR and all things dual sport in North America. Here you'll find a solution to every conceivable issue baked into this assembly. There's even a company in the UK machining wide range gear sets to compensate for the lack of a sixth gear. And I want it. So you get your brand new DR650 for 7K out the door and you've done your research so your Procycle order is already laid out on the workbench at home. Your new seat, oversized bars and riser, lithium battery, front and rear springs, new pegs and mounts, a skid plate and a new exhaust. Then you spend the season beating the shit out of it and having the time of your life, and you broke the bank already, but you're a little mod junkie now and you need the next hit. You got the carb and grind down the needle, then cut holes in your air box for more fuel and air, more power. You've snapped a lever by now, so you search the aftermarket for replacements and discover Warp 9 Racing. You notice that the DR650 is the only bike with its own tab, so you click that. Now you've loaded a cart with new wheels, an adjustable brake lever, a starter motor cap with a bearing in it, replacement hardware for stuff that hasn't even broken yet, but it's blue, and before you you know it, you've spent enough on your DR to have bought a fully loaded T7. But that's not a bad thing, because in a way, you've raised this bike, you know it inside and out, and if you're planning on truly adventure riding, that's an especially crucial pillar of self-sufficiency. If you're roadside stranded in Mongolia, would you rather be on a DR that you know how to fix, or a Desert X that you don't? Now the moral of this classic tale is that the true return on investment isn't material, it's wisdom. See, every DR650 rider benefits from the collective wisdom of the community amassed over the past three decades. To many, we look insane, but they don't get it. We find solace in cyberspace.
there's a rumor that Suzuki never updates the DR650 because any change to the bill of materials would void their safety and emission certifications. Yeah, I, you know, obviously I don't work for Suzuki or have any inside knowledge. It's all just to the whole community. We're assuming that it's, it's going to be, as soon as we touch, they touch it, if they make any upgrades to it, now they're going to have to meet all the latest, greatest emissions standards. And of course, it's already been eliminated out of a lot of European countries. So far, Suzuki's got away with it. And I, I don't. I, I think as far as what they've got invested into this, I mean, I think they're making a killing on it now. I mean, the dyes, we can progressively see the, uh, the stress marks and the dyes from when you first see like a 96 or a 98. Boy, the cases are nice and smooth. Now you look at the new ones, the stresses, stress marks in the corners and all that type of stuff. So, I mean, you can tell them dyes are old and they've made their money off of it and they keep selling them. Heck, when I was doing my uh, fuel injection project, all I wanted was the stock timing curve. They didn't refuse, but they said, we don't know. You know, you'd actually have to call Suzuki in Japan to, and you they might not even share that information. So I figured it out myself. So I think it's safe to assume that you've encountered other riders who would sort of challenge your dedication to this bike like I have. Uh, how would you explain or justify investing the time and the money into an outdated motorcycle instead of spending more money out of the gate to buy something more modern for, for, for new riders? First, obviously, is, is being able to maintain it yourself a lot easier than the new bikes are. You know, I mean, it's great technology and, and that's why we've got the performance and the lightness and whatever else out of the new bikes, but it comes at a price as far as user serviceability, you know, so you, <laughs> the DR650 is, is about as easy as you're going to get for service. BST is easy carburetor to work on and it's a decent street bike. It's a, it's a decent trail bike. You can work on it yourself. And there's so much aftermarket support because it's year model after year model after year model, everything's identical. Working on it, a lot of people really enjoy that. I mean, we have a lot of new people that come on, oh, I've never done that before. And our community pitches in, helps them. I've been involved with a couple of communities and uh, they're not like dear writers. On behalf of everyone with this bike, you know, thank you so much for the work you've done. Yeah. Um, yeah. one, more, one more question real quick. I got to grab something. So you've, uh, you've watched our channel and stuff and you've seen that we're sponsored by, uh, that flying eyes, sunglasses company. Uh-huh. What yeah. do you think? What do you think of these sunglasses? I know I've, I've seen Ryan tweaking them and pretty cool. Actually. Do you ever, do you ever ride with, with shades? So I just use the clear lens and, uh, yeah. wear sunglasses. I'm with you. And at first I was thinking, uh, they were too flimsy, but you can sit on them and they don't break. And then they slip right in through the foam. And, uh, wow. and I think we're, we're pretty, some of them are even safety rated. So I've been using them in the shop too, for when yeah. I'm grinding stuff and pretty amazing, you know, they pay us for, for doing a 15 second ad and, and I, that was it. So thank you. I just thought we'd <laughs> roll it right in there and it's that easy. So this is my DR650. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And like most DR650 owners, I'm not going to try to convince you to buy a brand new bike from the mid 90s, but let's say you want one bike that does it all. It doesn't do anything best, but it does it all. You want it to be cheap, reliable, easy to work on. You want to adventure ride, you want to commute, you want to dabble in trail riding, take a loved one to the movies, or at least have room for one day when someone might love you and also movies. There are very few bikes that hit all of those targets and none of them have the deep online support, let alone the vast international inventory of replacement and upgrade parts like the DR does. See, by intentionally neglecting this bike for 30 years, Suzuki created room for the growth of a community, one that provides its members with more organic, more piratical, more passionate support than a dealership ever could. So here's why you should buy a DR650, because every year that you own something like, let's say a KTM, it's gonna get a little bit worse. But every year that you foster a DR650, it's gonna get better. Thanks for watching.